Hello, YouTube audience. So today, really looking forward to this video. I'm going to get to talk about two of my favorite topics. So movies and then also Power BI. I'm going to walk you through the full setup of Power BI, everything from getting the data, cleaning the data in Power Query and using DAX, making the connections between various tables and uh, data sources. And then finally, we're going to make visualizations. This is going to be a multi-part series where we're going to build a Power BI report kind of like this, where we're going to work on formatting. We're going to use uh, bookmarks to be able to filter between things. Uh, we're going to build a drill down functionality as well. On top of that, we'll learn about uh, making a basic hamburger menu uh, and various visualizations and Power BI, how to get your data, the full everything you would need to know to get you started with Power BI. And the data is all um, publicly available, so you'll be able to follow along with this video. All right, let's get started. So make sure you're in Power BI Desktop. Open this up. Right, assuming you have Power BI Desktop set up and everything, let's uh, get right into what we need to do. So the first step we need to do is get data. So you can see in this uh, data section, there's nothing here. We have no data right now. This is where we'll build our visuals later. So more on that. And then here we have three views. So we have report view, data view. So you can view the uh, columns and the things, a little bit of your uh, data here and even make some changes, but we have no data yet. And then we have our model view where once we import our um, data tables, you can connect them between uh, each other. So let's go back to report view. And the very first thing we need to do, get data. So we can click this drop down, get data, and you'll see all of the options, some of the options here. If you click more, you'll see all of the options. You can also just click on this. And um, if you, it'll take you to the same place. If you just click this, get data. Um, all right. So a lot of great options like Excel workbook is great uh, if you just want to download a workbook and upload it. Uh, for, for right now, we are going to be using web. All right, so click web and then connect. Web, we need to provide a URL of where our data is. So I have this, this uh, URL here, IMDB chart top. And we have the top 250 movies by IMDb uh, rating here. So Shawshank Redemption is number one, and it goes all the way down to uh, 250. Because they have this formatted kind of like as a table here, we're going to be able to extract this information, like the title, the year, uh, the length, the if it's rated R or PG-13 or whatever, and uh, and then also the rating and the amount of reviews. All right, so paste in the URL and then just press OK and wait a little bit. Now that we loaded that, we get this uh, navigator page and we get uh, some suggested tables. So you can click on any of these tables and see what they're pulling. So table one, this looks like what we want. We're pulling all of those columns. I mean, there's uh, it looks like there's some data cleaning we'll have to do, but no problem there. Uh, table two, this doesn't look like what we need. And table three um, also seems like something completely different. So we just want to pull table one. So select table one, and then you want to click uh, load. Or actually, we want to click uh, transform data. If you click load, it's uh, fine. You can also, there's other ways to transform, get to this page. So don't worry. Uh, anyway, here we are. We've loaded our data into a Power Query Editor. So here we can make changes to the to the data before, um, before loading it into Power BI. You can always make adjustments here. So Things are formatted as steps. So like the first step is uh, source extracted from HTML change type. So you can add in steps here. All right, so 
bunch of data cleaning we're going to have to do. Let's start off with uh, column one. So within a uh, transform, I'm going to click on extract and we're going to extract all the text after a uh, delimiter. So our delimiter is a dot space because it's pretty consistent. Like all of these movies, they're uh, prefaced, prefixed by like this one dot, etc. We don't really want that. So let's, there we go. So we extracted out those number things. We don't want it, uh, the list numbers. And now we just have the movies. You see in column three, uh, it looks like the first part is the rating. And then the second part is the amount of reviews. So we don't really want both of these. So let's, um, let's fix this. All right. So here it looks like, um, it's always the first three characters are the rating. So based on that, let's do extract first characters and we'll do the first three characters. There we go. So now we have our ratings here. Okay, this one is going to be a bit more complicated, column three. So to make this, um, this is gonna be more useful, not as uh, text, but as actual numbers for our Power BI visuals. So we have, um, 2.8 M for million, and then we also have K for thousand here. All right, so how can we fix this? Let's see. All right, so we'll start off with selecting column three and then clicking replace values. And we'll find uh, the open parentheses and we'll replace it with nothing. And then we'll do that again. And we'll find our close parentheses. And then once again, replace it with nothing. All right, so now we just have 2.8 and then the the ending with either a million or a thousand. All right, but we the best way I think to do this is gonna be a conditional column. So we'll go to add columns and then click on conditional column. All right, so let's continue. We need to get uh, this 2.8 M and these 831 or whatever Ks to be actual numbers. So we are going to have to go to add column and then let's do conditional formatting or conditional column. That's why I clicked. Uh, column name, just gonna leave it as, uh, no, we'll, we'll not leave it, we'll call it rating. So we'll put the column name here, rating. And then uh, if uh, column three ends with, and then our value K. Uh, for now, we're just gonna put output 1000. Um, if column three ends with M, then 1 million. Else, select the column, column three. All right, so let's start with this. Let's see what we get. All right. So as you can see on the far right, we have this new column added and it has 1 million and a thousand for all the K's and millions. Um, great, but this isn't the actual value. So we're going to have to make some adjustments to this. So if you see at the, um, this like white bar here, this is called M code. So we are going to adjust this M to fix this. It's just easier. Um, I don't even think you can do it in the conditional formatting exactly how I want. It's much easier to do it here. So we already have a lot of the um, M written for us. We just need to make a few small adjustments here. All right, so let's go through this. So table, add column, replace values, and we're naming it rating. Now each if, the text ends with K, then 1000. So instead of just then 1000, we need to make an adjustment here. We need to actually have 
text.length. Okay, sorry. So I, I had to actually add in a, a bunch, a little bit more logic. So we still have this the same if text ends with columns three, uh, K, then. So number from text. So number from text is trying to, is converting our text to number. Uh, then text dot start. So we're taking uh, column three. So that's our, this 2.8 M, for example, for our first row. And we have text dot length column three minus one. So it's saying the length of column three. So one, two, three, four minus one. So three, one, two, three. So it's just going to extract this 2.8. And we're turning that 2.8 from text to a number. And then we are multiplying by 1000 because in this case it is K. Next we have, if it's a M, exact same thing. So else if except in this case, only difference is we are multiplying by 1 million. And then finally, if uh, there's no K, no M, then we just leave it as is. So let's press enter. And, and now we have our rating. So you can see it's working now. We have 1.9 million here as a number, 2.8 million. 253k as a number as well. Alrighty, so let's see what we need to do next. Well, next thing, we really don't need column three anymore, so we can remove that. All right, so you can see a new step was added to get to remove. Also, this column here, rate, so it's pulling this like little star rate thing. This is not really giving us any data, so we can remove that as well. All right, we actually need to also convert these uh, durations, like two hours, 22 minutes, uh, to have this be useful in our visualizations. Uh, we actually want this to be in like total minutes would be more helpful. All right, so we need to go to add columns and we need to click on custom column now we're going to create a new column name minutes and i already have an m some m code written out it kind of got definitely complex but i'll try and explain uh, as much as possible here so we're using let which let, lets us assign stuff so we have our uh, source text which our source text is column five so column five has like two hour ten minutes and now we're checking one does it contain an h in there like an hour and does it contain minute so uh, m so that's a variable we have now now we have a uh, split text so we split the text on hour now um now we have um this condition hours equals if contains hour so if this was true then uh we have our number from text so converting our text to a number uh text dot trim split text zero so we uh split it here and we're going to get the first um first uh what would you say the first uh the first item in that list zero else make it zero now for minutes if it's, if it contains minute then number from text uh text dot trim text dot replace split text if contains hour then one else uh, zero. So this is basically like we're extracting the minutes from this variable. So our total minutes 
is going to be in our hours that we extracted times 60 plus minutes and we're going to save that as total minutes so yeah this kind of got a bit complex it's definitely a lot for like you're just starting out with uh m and took me a while to get this set up actually uh so feel free to just like basically copy this and you will have your minutes um, i'll put this in the description so you can easily copy and paste into your um, quickly scroll down again so you can copy and write this down all right gonna press ok and let's see did it work yes we have our minutes two hours and 22 minutes 142 minutes perfect perfect so all right so we don't need column five anymore we can delete that one so let's click remove cleaned our data but we should just uh give these a little bit better names so you can just double click on the columns and we'll rename it so column one we'll call it uh movie title um column two we will call it imdb rating um column four we'll call it year column seven what, what would you call this it, it's not like rating it's um I guess maybe like you'd call it parental guidance. I think uh, parental guidance rating, call it that. Um, all right, what else do we have? All right, that's everything. So now that we've cleaned our data, we've renamed the columns, let us go back to home and you can click on close and apply. So our table that we just uh, worked on is now getting loaded into Power BI. All right, so once it's finished loading in, you'll see table one, and here we have all our columns. Uh, I wanna rename this from table one though, and I think you should probably too. So you can right click, create, click rename, and how about we call it IMDB Movies, and we'll press enter. We need one more table though for this project. So we'll click on get data again. And I'm going to use a Python script for this table and an API, which I'll show you how to set up. Now, if you don't want that challenge, I guess, or the extra steps, uh, I'm also going to be providing all of the uh, files, all of the data I'm working on as. Um, as a uh, Excel workbooks. So you can use, you can download it and just use this Excel workbook uh, instead if you don't want to go through this. Otherwise, let's continue. So Python script, that is what we're going to be using. Click on Python script and click connect. I think this is pretty cool. You can paste in a Python script right here and use it to help you get data so all right so the python script i'm going to be using will use one api the api is from this uh, tmdb or the movies database.org uh, you're going to want to create an account and then you're going to want to go to settings slash api the first time you use it it'll have a section where it says like create new api app and you'll which is on this page and you'll click that. And then it's gonna ask you some information like your email, your address, uh, your phone number, um, what you're using the app for. So just fill all that stuff out. And uh, as soon as you press okay, they pretty much instantly give you the uh, API access. And then there's uh, two API keys. There's this one API key, and then there's API read access token. For uh, what I'm going to do right now, we only need this API uh, read access token. All right, so I have my script here. Uh, again, we'll provide it for you guys to uh, copy and paste. 
So you'll need to put in uh, your API key. Um, and then we have our uh, base URL, headers, uh, data. Um, and I'm making sure that we're collecting uh, 250 movies. Um, some exception stuff. Uh, and then let me just go to the end where we store everything as a data frame and we're going to have these columns movie title and actor name and we need to store this as a variable a data frame variable uh, because in power bi when you store something as a variable they're able to uh they're able to like recognize that as a potential table and then we can um, import that into power bi all right all right, so we have this folder now, Python. Let's open that and see what we got in there. All right, within Python, we have our data frame. So we'll click on our data frame and we have our movies and actor names right here. And this is uh, perfect. There's actually no uh, real transformations that I need to do. So I'm just gonna load this. All right, so we have our data frame and we'll rename this. Uh, let's call it TMDB actors. So we'll start off by making some quick, like I'm just going to make a few visuals here. So I'll put a table here and we can put our uh, movie titles maybe in this table. And maybe we put the IM, IMDB rating. Now say we want to put in Oh, I was going to give an example of what happens when you don't do the connection, but uh, Power BI is actually smart enough that it already, like it automatically makes the connection for us. So what we're doing is we're connecting these two tables and within this uh, TMDB actors, we have um, each movie has multiple actors associated with it, but within IMDB movies, uh, there's only one movie in here. Um, so it's a one-to-many relationship. And having this relationship means we can build visualizations from um, visualizations using this data and this data side by side. So, so yeah, it's very important. So here, we'll give an example here. All right, and instead of uh, a table, let's do this as a matrix. Matrix are kind of like uh, pivot tables. All right, so we have our movie title, and then we have as values our IMDB rating. Let's do uh, another value of our actors. And instead of first actor name, we'll select count of uh, actors. Filter this from highest to lowest. All right, so we're able to see the movies and the actors in it. Uh, fine, but what will happen if we remove this connection? So let's delete this relationship. And if we go back to report view, you see it's no longer working. Essentially what's happening here is it's just showing us the count of the total amount of actors that we have in this table. All right, so let's fix that again. We'll just select movie title and match it with movie title here. And if we go back to our report, now it's good. Um, all right, cool. So we're at a pretty good spot now. We finished, um, we finished getting our data and we finished um, cleaning our data and then we finished making uh, the relationships. All right, before we continue with the visuals, there is one issue I spotted here where a lot of these uh, movies that are in the IMDB movies, we're not pulling the actors for, I think part of the issue is maybe these lists for top movies from IMDB versus TMDB aren't one-to-one. -one. Um, so I'm gonna show you uh, a workaround for this. Um, if you need to change uh, 
how you're getting data, you can always right click on the table and click edit query. And then you can click this little um, nut icon next to source. And you can see here, um, because we were getting a lot of blanks, like the 250 movies from this uh, TMDB doesn't match one to one with IMDB. So I put, um, it gets 1,250 here. And I also, for the uh, break, I put also 1,250. So this just, um, yeah, this, this helps a lot with making sure that we don't have too many um, movies where we don't have any actors associated with it. Uh, there's still a few, like a couple of the Star Wars series, and I saw Indiana Jones, but generally this is getting majority of them we're getting the actors associated with it now we're going to have to build our visuals so let me delete all of these and um, i thought of a few questions maybe we could try and answer i'm sure i'll come up with more as i go so like what pg rating had the best imdb which actors uh which actor was in the mo uh, most so like which i guess who's the best actor another way of looking at this uh, and then like what year had the best IMDb and does movie length influence IMDb rating? So let's, uh, let's do these. Um, all right. So first I'm thinking, let's do the parent, the parental guidelines one. So we're going to need some sort of like, um, uh, bar chart. So let's try this one. So we'll need parental guidelines and all right. So this looks like count, which I don't think really is what we want here. All right. So first thing looks like we have a bit of an issue here where we're only getting count. This is probably because it's format as text. So if you, um, we can change the format. So if you click on it, you should see format. And we want the data type to be a uh, decimal number. Yes. All right. And now that's better. So, so we could have it like this, or we can have it like this. Now, if we go back to count for a second, you can see that there's definitely some of these that don't have a ton of ratings. So most of the movies are rated R. And so let's add a filter on here. So we'll have, um, so you can actually filter visuals. So, so let's just select all of these that have greater than uh, one, one rating. Yeah, so I've just been playing around with a few visuals. Um, I'm still figuring out like exact visuals we'll want to put for this product project. So I have, um, I'm using a stacked column chart here and we have the count of uh, ratings in the 250 for these various ratings. So it seems like R has the most amount of movies rated in the top 250. This chart's called a, uh, a line and clustered column chart. So you can see for the X axis is year and the Y axis is the count of movie titles. So you can see these bars are the years where we had um, the most amount of the amount of movie titles making it into the top 50 list. And then this line is just the IMDb rating for that year. And then here we just have a, a scatter plot, which these are good for seeing, um, seeing how the X and Y axis play against each other. It looks like movies were a little bit shorter pre 1940s. One thing is we could, add a tooltip here. So a tooltip is 
the tooltip is just going to now, uh, you can add things like when you hover over stuff in Power BI. So you can see now not only do we see uh, the uh, year minutes, but we also see like what the movie was. Like this 80 minute movie in 1995 was Toy Story. I'm going to make a, maybe we'll do a matrix actually. Tables and matrices tend to be pretty common uh, charts that you'll work with a lot. All right, so in this matrix, let, let's see what we want to add. Let's add all of our actors in here as first. So we have quite a few actors and we are gonna, we're gonna filter this down. Uh, next, let's add in movie title and the movie title we don't want it as a column you see how we have literally all 250 movies as columns we want it as a value so we don't want first we want a uh, count all right so something's up here where it says 250 for all let's see what's going on all right so i had to make a bit of a change here um so before it was a cross filter direction with single just change it to both and then press apply filter so you can change that if you click on this so that fixed uh, the issue here with our actors now um i think it would be nice to be able to see like you know we see that okay this actor best flowers was in 10 movies but wh which movies was she in so let's drag movie title underneath rows and now if we click this we can see all of the movies that she was in so casino great movie i, I love that movie goodfellas another great movie these are all of the movies he was in i didn't know he was in uh joker was he really in joker oh he was like the um okay yeah he was the late night uh show host in there i didn't i forgot that okay yeah, so we can do that. So wow, we have a lot of actors here. You can just keep scrolling for like ever. All right, so another thing I'm thinking we could put is the maybe the um, rating we can incorporate here. So we don't want the rating as a column. We actually want it as values as well. So let's not put the count of the rating, but let's change this to average. So this lets us know what was the average IMDb rating of the these movies that these actors were in? Let's see, so on Morgan Freeman. So Morgan Freeman's an average of 8.54 in the movies he's been in. Could also add in uh, minutes if we want. So we could have average minutes of the pictures these actors are in. So yeah, we have something here now. Uh, if we wanted this, let's say the other way around where we want the movie title instead, we could just switch the order of these. And now we can um, see the movie and we can open this and we'll see all of the actors in it. Great movie though. I really liked uh, 12 Angry Men. All right. Anyway, I'm going to switch it back though to have actor and then movie title. All right. So another cool thing we can do is uh, slicers. So if we add a slicer above this, um, we can put some sort of filter here, like maybe a uh, year. So let's say we're only interested in pre-1950s. So now we can filter that and you can see um, it changes quite a bit. Um, the actors are different. Top the actor with the highest amount of movie titles is Gina Carrado. And she was in, I don't know this actor, but they were in Casablanca, Citizen Kane, Gone with the Wind. So some really famous movies here. And interestingly, on this will change all the filters, all the visuals, by the way. Interesting, it seems like there's a lot higher count of this rating past and uh, G and approved versus if we change it a lot it's uh, mostly rated r movies so the ratings seem to have changed over time yeah so matrixes and uh tables are great 
I think matrixes are better when you have like a little bit more of a complex type of visual, like something you want to be able to kind of expand out and see other things. Yeah, I, I really like uh, matrixes. You'll probably end up using quite a bit. Uh, and these uh, stacked column charts are another pretty common visual that you'll use when you're building Power BI dashboards. All right, another pretty common visual are cards. So we'll make one of those. So cards are usually just some like simple um, overall metrics. You might have like count of IMDB rating. Doesn't make sense, we know it's 250 movies, but maybe the average. So of these 250 movies, the average is 8.31 rating. And you can see if we change it to 1950s, it was 8.24 versus let's see how movies were in the 2000s, 8.29, uh, say minutes. Like what is the average minutes? So average minutes is uh, one, 29.05 could also make this as a gauge so we could show it like like this if we prefer don't love this so i can remove it all right so here we have a scatter chart where i've on the x-axis year the y-axis i have minutes do though is we could do some conditional formatting here and Let's conditionally format our IMDB rating as average. And we can either you can you can format as gradient or you can enter in rules. So gradient, we did it like this where we had red and blue. You can see that the lower ratings are formatted more reddish kind of toned, and then the higher ratings are more blue toned. We click this eraser, we can remove the conditional formatting. Uh, let's do rule based instead. So we can do, um, uh, we'll do number. Yeah, we had the wrong field here, count of minutes. We don't want count of minutes. We want uh, IMDB rating. Let's change these though a bit. Seven weeks. Remember, these are like the top movies. So maybe we'll change this to like, I don't know, 8.9. All right, let's try that. Yeah, so you see like that, you can um, have your points conditionally formatted. Not a huge fan still of the formatting, to be honest. Maybe I'll just have it as everything as like this uh, regular blue and maybe just uh, the ones that are above, say, 8.9 as green let's try that yeah a little bit better now so we have these standout movies as green uh we can't actually see the rating yet so we should add that as a tool tip and then we want to make sure it's not count but average so there we go we can now see it now it doesn't look great having it say average of imdb rating so we can instead just put it has IMDB rating. And now if you hover over it, it's just gonna say IMDB rating. All right, so uh, next thing is maybe you want to make a second page. So if you click new page, now we have our second page here. So I'm gonna build this uh, second page quickly now. All right, so I built a little bit of a basic visual here. I have a card here with the actor, which will make sense in a second minutes rating pie chart with um count of movie titles and their uh rating here and then the count of movie titles by year and then just a really basic uh table here this is in a matrix uh what i want to do next is place actor name here in drill through and uh if we click this Control click this arrow back. We can now 
click on an actor, like say Morgan Freeman. And if we right click it, we can drill through. And now it's going to show this page just for Morgan Freeman. So we see that Morgan Freeman um, average amount of minutes is 141 minutes. Um, average IMDb rating 8.54. We can see here's the movies he was in, ratings, minutes, the um, parental guidelines, and the years. And then we have a uh, our pie chart here. So he was both in PG-13 and uh, rated R movies. And then we can click back and we'll return back here. Maybe why don't we add a page three, which so I have this selected as a sum of year. You can pick average of year. Uh, it's not going to matter. Um, it, it is weird to do sum of year, but the reason I am, you'll see in a sec, is because I'm going to make this a drill down to just one movie. So if you sum the year of one movie, it's just that year. And then I'll just make a really simple table with, we'll put the actor names here. All right, so now let's just rename these. So we have home, actor, and then we'll call this page uh, movie. First thing, let's try and um, like reorganize this a little bit. Okay, a little bit of uh, resizing. All right, another thing we can do is use uh, buttons. So let's use this uh, blank button. Move this. Let's uh, change the shape a little bit of it. So I think um, maybe a pill shape will look a little better. Um, we should give it some text inside of it. It's so under button. We want to go to text and let's write uh, drill actor fill. I'm thinking maybe uh, let's see what colors we got. I'm going to do a dark, like a really dark blue. I will make the font color white. Border color, I'm actually going to use like a light blue. So I'll use a light blue with uh, just a slightly transparent as well. All right, so that's like the basic formatting of the button. But what we need now is an action. So let's turn that on and there's a couple of types of actions. Anyway, for now, we're going to use drill through. It looks like when our button is unselected, it's going to be like all kind of grayed out like this. And when we select something, it becomes blue. And then if we click it, it drills through to um, this actor. All right, so next thing for this matrix table, I want to build a custom, custom tooltip. So we're going to have to turn on tooltip and let's do report page. And we're going to make a new page. So first thing we'll need to turn on allow use as tooltip. And uh, you see it's going to change the uh, canvas size and the page size because this is a tooltip. Customize this as well. I'm thinking we'll put our uh, stacked column chart and let's put uh, x axis y, I mean x axis year, and then maybe the movie title in the y axis, and we'll just have that as count. And let's just maybe do a little bit of reformatting. Could remove the. Um, so I actually think maybe we don't even need the x-axis here and like so to remove the title. No, actually we do need the x-axis, but maybe just not the title. And what else? Uh, and we could probably get rid of the y-axis title as well. And then we'll just change the actual title. Uh, let's make it movies released by year all right movies released by year uh and we can change the alignment maybe we'll do center alignment 
And let's give this tooltip a try now. So if we go back to home, click on this, and let's go back to um, general tooltips, and then let's select movie year. Now you can see that and our tooltip is we have this custom tooltip. So as we scroll through these um, actors, we can see the years that movies are being released. And if it's just one, I mean, it's just going to show that one year where the movie was released. So I think a cool little extra bit of information we added in there with our tooltip. Okay, next, let's add in our buttons. So we could, uh, let's do, again, pill shape. And uh, we can, we'll make this, uh, could probably just copy this button from earlier, make this easier. We'll delete that instead of redoing this. All right, so the thing that is going to be different, though, here, is our action is not going to be drill through it's going to be bookmark and then we need to change our uh value here okay we'll make this one movies so we can also change um how it looks on different events like when it's pressed on hover when it's disabled so that's why this one's gray um that's its disabled state i believe so maybe on hover, uh, we'll have it turn to light blue. So copy that, paste it over, and we're going to have our second button, which will be, um, let's make that actors. So we'll have that as actors. And let's just make sure it's the same for all the states you see yeah so actors here and then on press also actors okay all right so we have our two buttons here and what i want is when this actors button is pressed i want this table to change to a uh, table about actors which it already is but when this movies buttons uh pressed i want this table to be a movie uh table where we have the movie first instead of the actors first so let's build that matrix i think we should do an, a matrix maybe we could just do a regular table even for this like see how that looks and i'll decide later if we need um all right so first we need a um, movie title here we would need um I think IMDB rating, minutes, parental guidelines, year, and uh, what the heck we'll even put re review count. Uh, all right, I think we need to just uh, figure out what should go first. So let's look at how we did it here. We did rating and then just average minutes. So. We could do um, maybe parental guidelines first, uh, rating, reviews. Should we call it total reviews instead? Let's see how that, yeah, total reviews, minutes, year, year released. Okay. So we have two tables directly above each other. Now, if we click these, nothing's gonna happen. What we have to do is now build some uh, bookmarks. So we can do that. If we go to our view section and we need both uh, bookmarks and we're gonna need selection as well. All right, so selection, you can see as all of our visuals, we can hide them or unhide them. So we need following visuals we need to find. 
We could hide and unhide these buttons, but I actually don't want to do that. I, I'm going to make this like very simple, this navigation. So we need to find our, all right, we have our slicer, our matrix underneath here, and we have our table here. We can rename these to make it a little, you know, more, a little easier. So we'll call this movie table. And let's call this um, actor. Oh, and one more thing I forgot I wanted to do. I actually would like to add a, another drill down into here. So have a drill through into movie title here. So I'm going to actually copy this and put it directly on top of this one. And then I'm going to change the uh, change it from drill actor to drill movie. So if we go to button style, call this drill movie. We also have to change default to drill movie and action. We're going to have it as drill through but we're going to change destination to move. All right, so we have two uh, drill down buttons. And let's continue. So we're back in our selection, and we need to just distinguish which button's which. So this top button is our drill movie button. So we'll just write drill movie button. Um, so let's hide that button now. And then here, no. All right, here, this is our drill actor button. Drill actor button. So if we select, we want to select this, this. Uh, all right, so right now we have actor. So in that case, let's hide our movie table and now we have actor underneath so we'll select our movie table and then we'll select our actor matrix and these are the things that are going to change so we're going to click um we're going to click add so we're adding a bookmark and we're going to change a few things about this bookmark we're going to remove data and we only want it to affect selected visuals and let's give it a bookmark name so we can identify it so we'll call it uh, actor matrix right, now we're going to make another bookmark we're going to hide uh, actor matrix or we're going to unhide movie table we're going to hide actor button but we're going to unhide movie button and we're going to now uh, select these. So we need movie button, movie table, drill actor button, and actor matrix. And we're going to add another bookmark. This bookmark, we're going to call it movie, um, movie table. All right, so now uh, we're going to click on our button. And we're going to click our movies button and under action for bookmark, we're going to select movie table. And then we're going to click our actors button and under bookmark, we're going to pick actors matrix. All right, so now let's just hide some of this stuff. Oh, and of course, I forgot one thing, didn't I? Um, I forgot that we don't want data and we only want selected visuals. All right. All right, cool, now we're all good. So watch this, if we select actor, 
you see it updates to that actor table. If we select movies, it updates to that movies table. So this is now really good for us to use more space efficiently so we can fit in more visuals on just one page. And um, if we select the movie, we have the option here to drill our movie. And here we go, we're in this uh, drill movie page. So yeah, pretty, pretty cool. We can now go back. The next thing we're going to do is build a menu icon here that we can use to switch between our uh, three tabs. All right, so you'll want to go to Google and just look up hamburger icon. And uh, I'm just going to go to images. And um, yeah, feel free to pick one of these. All right, I'm opening my hamburger icon. And there we go. We have our hamburger. So we are going to put that right here in like the top left corner. So under insert in buttons, let's go to navigator and insert a page navigator. All right, so we have a uh, navigation here and let's just, all right, under, um, I'm just gonna adjust the format a little bit of this page navigation. So under, instead of horizontal, let's do a uh, vertical and we'll make it like that. And then um, the shape, right, shape for now, I'm just gonna leave it, I'm gonna make it pill. Also just gonna make the font a little bit bigger so make it 15 um, and then also when it's selected make that 15 and all right we're going to insert a shape now so let's insert a rectangle insert that here make it approximately this big and then we're going to make let's change the color a little bit so maybe um all right, so under style and then fill, let's make this, um, let's go with like a light. Yeah, let's do this. Let's go with this like kind of dark blue color here. All right, we're gonna make the page navigator kind of on top here. And uh, let's tr fix these colors as well. So I'm thinking, actually gonna go with um, rectangle. All right, so it's what my menu looks like right now. I'm gonna also add a reset button here. Okay, so this is the basic menu. I mean, the style, I admit the colors aren't like perfect here. Definitely need some work to get the colors and navigation to look a little better. But you have the basic thing here. And what we want to do next is we need these three elements. So you see the button, the menu bar, and then that um, the blue like backdrop. And we're going to group those together. So we have these three selected, we'll group them. And we'll call this group like, so you see if we click it, it goes away. Um, so that's our like menu. And then here we have our uh, hamburger. So we are going to add a new bookmark and we'll call this bookmark hamburger close and let's make that turn get rid of data and make sure it's selected visuals all right and now we're going to open our this and select it create a new bookmark and we'll call it hamburger open all right and then we can take data off and pick selected values. And we're pretty much there, we're really close. So last thing, we'll select this button and then we'll turn on action 
And then our action is going to be a bookmark, and that bookmark is going to be book hamburger close. Um, and maybe we'll just change the style a little bit. Um, yeah, I think it looks a little bit better like that in orange. So if we click that, it closes that. And now we can turn this action on. And this is also going to use a bookmark. And it's going to be hamburger open. So if you click this, you see it opens that. And now we have our navigation. And if we click on one of these, it takes us to the page. Um, so all you'd need to do now is you just need to build this exact same thing on all the other pages, and then you'd have a fully functional navigation. Now I want to do some formatting here. So first of all, this is a tool tip. So I'm going to click hide page for this one. Now we have these three pages, home actor and movie. Let's just first thing I want to just play around a little bit with sizing of things to get this right complex power bi report but this is this is good for now so um what i like to do is take a screenshot of the page i'm working on so let's do the home page first so to so to format it first i take a screenshot of this page So I have a new PowerPoint slide. So let's delete all the elements right now in this slide. And we'll copy this screenshot and paste it in here. And then I just resize that screenshot to fit the whole um, Power BI page. So then in Insert, I look through the shapes. I, I like to use uh, rounded corners a lot. Uh, rounded corners, I think, are just like generally a lot of things are built with rounded corners now, and it's easy on the eyes. I try to like group things together. So, can roughly group that as one thing. So, I just move this around a little bit. We'll have to resize this in a bit. And this might be one section. Now, the next thing, I like to give it a bit of a shadow. So I like to use this one, bottom right shadow. All right, so we gave it a shadow. Um, and let's just uh, give it a little bit of a border. I guess first we also need to figure out the color of our theme. So a really basic theme you can do, like the simplest one, is a white background. And then maybe you can make the, uh, the um, background behind that white background like a kind of off-white gray. Let's pick um, like some sort of... Uh, kind of light gray like that. Yeah, so that makes it kind of pop a little bit. So we can copy this and we can paste it down here. And why don't we make that like roughly this size? Um, sometimes I adjust the corners, so I'll make these a little less rounded. And that should be good. All right, now, um, we can delete the image because I'm done with that. But I need to insert another shape kind of behind all of this. So it's going to be the full full um, image, you see. And we want to send this shape all the way to the back. So send to back. And this is going to be like the color underneath, underneath everything. So I'm thinking like just a slightly off-white 
kind of background. I'm going to keep it really simple. All right, so after that's all good, save it as a PNG. All right, so I saved it as a PNG and we're back in Power BI. Uh, we'll want to go back to visualizations, format, page, and then we'll go to canvas background and you want to click browse and find your image you just saved. So we have it here, my home. All right, so next you want to turn transparency all the way to 0%. And there we go, it's here, but we need to make some adjustments to make this fit. Resize this a little bit. Let's just resize this one as well. All right, there we go. I think this looks definitely uh, better and it's a very basic format and you can see it just, it pops a little bit more now. Uh, so next steps, you would do like the same thing to your other pages where you'd want to format them as well. So yeah, we have a pretty decent Power BI report here. So we have uh, one functionality where you can switch between actors and movies here. And we have the option to click on one of those actors and then drill down into that actor and get all the information on which movies they were in, the average minutes, uh, the parental guidance ratings, uh, we also built a custom tooltip here. So when you hover over it, you see the years of all the movies that they released, the specific actors, built a scatter plot, matrices, tables, slicers. So, uh, and we saw how to get data. So I, I think this was definitely a really good intro to uh, getting you started in Power BI from getting your data, uh, doing a bit of. Um, of uh, Power Query and and uh, I hope this was helpful and feel free to ask uh, any questions or leave comments.